right, welcome. Welcome to the second Pasadena Business and Economic Summit. I'm pleased to see so many of you here today. Uh, my name is uh, Tom Daly. I'm a partner at the intellectual property law firm of Christie Parker and Hale, and I'm currently the chair of the board of directors of the Pasadena Chamber of Commerce. I'd like to start by thanking our partner in today's event, uh, the city of uh, Pasadena. Thank you, city. From the city with us, uh, Mayor Terry Turnick, council member, yeah, yeah definitely. <laughs> Council members uh, Margaret McCoston and Victor Gordo. <laughs> City Manager Michael Beck. <laughs> Assistant City Manager Julie Gutierrez. And they also have the economic development staff who uh, all came together to support and partner to present this uh, business and economic summit in Pasadena. So thanks to all of them for their generous support of today's event. Uh, the event was uh, organized through the Chamber's uh, Business and Economic Development Committee and I would like the members of that committee uh, to stand up so that they can be recognized. And also, uh, if uh, my colleagues on the Board of Directors of the Pasadena Chamber of Commerce, if they could also stand uh, to be recognized. We are grateful to uh, the City of Pasadena for making this event possible. We're also very grateful to uh, sponsor Wells Fargo for their support as well. So, Wells. I also want to thank our corporate table supporters, uh, Christy Parker and Hale, East West Bank, the East Central Credit Union, Kaiser Permanente, the Pasadena City College Economic and Workforce Development Office, and the Rose Bowl Operating Company. Everyone here today is certainly accomplished and noteworthy, but I'd like to recognize a few of you uh, joining us t today. So we're pleased to have the Pasadena City College Superintendent, President Rajin Verdeen, Dean. Patricia Breen, President of Pacific Oaks College. The Huntington Hospital President and CEO, Stephen Ralph. Uh, Phil Hockey, a former Pasadena City Manager and now Executive Director of the San Gabriel Valley Council of Governments. Patrick Conyers, the Executive Director of the Pasadena Educational Foundation. Uh, Laura Unger, the CEO of the Pasadena Symphony and Pops. Margaret Martinez, CEO of Chapcare and a Chamber Board Member. <laughs> The uh, Kid Space Museum CEO, Michael Shanklin. We also have a distinguished uh, panel and uh, presenters, and you'll be meeting them in just a few minutes. Okay. Now's my time to talk a little bit about the Pasadena Chamber. Uh, the Pasadena Chamber of Commerce is thriving. Uh, despite economic challenges to our members and our economy over the past seven years, our membership has nearly doubled. Uh, also, really good news, we have moved into a new building for the Pasadena Chamber of Commerce at 44 North Mentor Avenue. 
So we're very happy to have our own home in Pasadena, home sweet home. Uh, if any of you want to come and visit, we invite uh, any visitors to come and stop by and see our unique office space. Uh, they really did a great job. It, it looks fantastic. I'm pleased to report that the Chamber is very busy doing everything we can to ensure the prosperity of our members. At the same time, we work to support our local economy and ensure that our city provides for appropriate growth and development so we can all continue to flourish. I think uh, the biggest uh, news in terms of efforts that the Chamber has made is our collaboration with the Pasadena Unified School District through the Office of College and Careers with grant support from the Pasadena Educational Foundation. Uh, beginning last spring, the Chamber has been working to place interns with our member companies, find classroom speakers, and job shadow opportunities, and support the education of students at Blair High School, Muir High School, and Pasadena High School. It's an exciting new venture for us. It's one that we intend to be ongoing. It has been going very well so far, and we are encouraged with the momentum we have built and the enthusiasm of the students, teachers, and administrators at the school and with the district. Not only that, we've gotten great feedback from those members who have uh, had students uh, working with them. So a little pitch here. If you're interested in supporting our efforts by offering internships, job shadow opportunities, or want to speak to a class of high school students, please let Amy Full know at the Chamber office. Okay, before we introduce our featured speaker, I want to invite Pasadena Mayor Terry Turnick to the microphone. Uh, Terry Turnick was elected Mayor of Pasadena this last spring. Prior to that, he served on the Pasadena City Council from 2009 to 2015, serving District 7. Terry Turnick was born and raised in New York City. He graduated from Princeton University's Woodrow Wilson School with a degree in Public and International Affairs. He also earned a Master of Science in Urban Planning from Columbia University's School of Architecture. He served in the Army National Guard and Reserves for six years. Mayor Turnick moved to Pasadena from Massachusetts in 1982 to accept the position of Planning Director. Terry was Pasadena's planning director for three years and helped to rewrite the zoning ordinance, the general plan, and establish the re redevelopment plan for old Pasadena. After leading, leaving city government, Terry built a career in real estate as a developer and manager of residential and commercial properties all over Southern California. He remained active in Pasadena Affairs through his 20 year service as board member of Pasadena of the, as a board member of Pasadena Neighborhood Housing Services, a nonprofit organization devoted to affordable housing in Northwest Pasadena. In 2005, Sid Tyler appointed Terry to the Planning Commission. He also served as a member of the Design Commission before being elected to the Pasadena City Council, representing District 7 in 2009. He was reelected in 2013. And in 2015, Mr. Turnick was elected Mayor of Pasadena. Mr. Mayor. Good afternoon. We're going to have to develop a shorter version of that, I think. Um, I'm delighted to, uh, to be here. I want to thank Paul Little and the, and the Chamber uh, for working so hard to organize this and for all of you for showing up. Um, this uh, joint activity of the city and the chamber, I think, is vital to the community's success, and I appreciate uh, everything that you do. Um, from my perspective, I think uh, the city is in pretty good shape, and we've got mostly good news to report, um, which is attributable significantly to the fact that we have such a diverse local economy, and many of you have a lot to do with that. Um, I, I do. Uh, you will hear from the various experts from the city and elsewhere, uh, and I don't get to do the heavy lifting in terms of the presentation of the facts and figures today. Mine is really just a general welcome. I would be, I mean, they'll, they'll provide you with all the information that you need, but 
I do want to make the point that we have some challenges confronting us and we're not going to uh, pay them short shrift. Many of you will be involved in discussions going forward about the, uh, the discussions on the minimum wage, increasing the minimum wage in Pasadena. We are, um, all of us are beset, particularly the retail community, uh, with challenges posed by the emerging homelessness uh, issue. Uh, everyone in the room is impacted by rising utility rates. These are the sort of bad news issues that we can't ignore. Uh, and in fact, inside the building, you need to understand that we're struggling with correcting the cultural problems uh, that were revealed by the embezzlement scandal that all of you are very much aware of. So while this is uh, intended to be kind of an upbeat presentation and focusing on the positive, uh, I would be remiss if we didn't identify the fact that we've got some serious work to do, and I expect that many of you will be involved with us in City Hall in working on, on all of these important issues. Uh, the good news is that I continue, people have been asking, you know, how is it to be the new mayor and, and meet with, uh, with everyone, and we have uh, purportedly 1,100 nonprofit organizations in Pasadena. Uh, some of them are in the room today, and I think I've been just about every one of them in the past six months. Um, but the, the good news about that is that you can't help but be impressed by the, the intellectual horsepower, uh, the initiative, the creativity of people who live and work in Pasadena. I mean, it's really, I, I learned that for the first time when I was campaigning door to door, just people meeting on their front porches. But in, in meeting with business people, uh, developers, with the nonprofits, and with just citizens at various uh, parades and, and celebrations. The, the variety of talent that we have in this community and the willingness of people to invest of, of that talent and, and of their treasure um, in the community really bespeaks why, why this is a great city and why I think we can all be optimistic about solving these problems that I, that I listed earlier. So I look forward to learning with you uh, the various uh, pieces of information that will be conveyed to us today. I'm grateful for your attendance and I'm, I'm particularly grateful for the opportunity to be able to serve uh, as mayor. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. It's now my pleasure to introduce uh, Cynthia Kurtz. Ms. Kurtz became president and CEO of the San Gabriel Valley Economic Partnership in January 2009. Prior to holding this position, Cynthia served as the city manager for the city of Pasadena from March 1998 until January 2008. She began with the city of Pasadena in 1987 as the capital projects administrator and in 1990 became the Director of Public Works and Transportation. She also served as the Interim City Manager for the City of Covina, California. Prior to moving to California, Cynthia worked for the City of Portland, Oregon, holding a variety of positions in the Office of Transportation and the Bureau of Economic Development. Cynthia holds a Bachelor of Science degree in Community Development and Housing from Pennsylvania State University and a Master of Arts degree in Transportation and Urban Planning from the University of Iowa. Cynthia serves on the Board of Directors for the Metropolitan Water District of Southern California, the Advisory Board for the University of Laverne School of Public Administration, and is co-chair of the Capital Campaign for Villa Esperanza Services. She is a guest columnist for the Los Angeles Newspaper Group, writing a weekly column on the economy and business. She lives in Pasadena with her husband, Jim McDermott, who I understand is here today. So join me in welcoming Cynthia. Thank you for that very nice introduction, but I have to agree with our mayor. Uh, we need to shorten those, and in my case, we need to take those dates out of there. Um, 
It is always great to come to Pasadena and to be able to present here uh, because I look around the audience and I see so many friends uh, and so many friendly faces and uh, it is really a pleasure to be here. I want to thank Paul Little and the Chamber for inviting me to participate in the program today. An incredibly impressive program uh, and uh, I can't wait to hear the other speakers and the panelists. Um, I do work for the San Gabriel Valley Economic Partnership, but in the interest of time, I'm not going to do my usual talking about the partnership, and instead, Paul was nice enough to let me put some brochures out on the front table. A talk about the partnership will be 25 years old next year, so we've been around the region for a long time, working at bringing businesses and jobs to the San Gabriel Valley, uh, and I hope that you will pick up a brochure on your way out uh, to learn more about what we do. What I've been asked to do today is sort of set the stage for the other speakers and talk about the region that we're in and what's happening, what has happened, and what is happening uh, with the job growth in the San Gabriel Valley. And um, to do that, I am going to start and set the stage by just talking about the San Gabriel Valley and what the region is that my organization and the numbers and data I'm going to speak about today uh, over, uh, represent. Uh, but I should probably tell you first that I, I am not, as, as many of you know, I'm not an economist. This is not my data. I did not do this research. The uh, partnership for decades has commissioned our economic research from what I think is one of the, the best economic research companies in uh, Southern California, and that's the Kaiser Center at the Los Angeles County Economic Development Corporation. And they do a number of different studies for us. One is an annual study that we get in the spring. It's our economic forecast, and we look at the major sectors and um, what is happening in, in the number of businesses and the number of jobs in our region in those sectors. And then every three or four years, we layer that with uh, an industry and employment overview that goes behind the major sectors and looks at the actual types of jobs that are either growing or are leaving our region so that we're able to see how those jobs are, are impacting what's happening in our economy. So with that, let me talk about the region. Uh, San Gabriel Valley is a very big region. It's basically eastern end of Los Angeles County. Uh, Pasadena is the west side of that, along with La Cunada, South Pass, Alhambra. And then it goes to the county line, to Claremont, uh, Pomona, uh, Diamond Bar. There are 31 incorporated cities in this region, more cities than in any other of the economic regions in LA County. Uh, also a number of uh, pockets of unincorporated county area. The workers payroll is 800, I think I said 385 square miles. The workers payroll in 2014 for the region was $30.7 billion and that is increasing. It was 3.9% higher than the previous year and there's almost 72,000 businesses in this region. Um, it's a very diverse region. It's always been a diverse region. We know that here in Pasadena. Always been heavily Hispanic, and it's 45% of our population is Hispanic. Uh, just within the last five or six years, though, our second largest group became the Asian population at 27%. And then you can see almost 22% white, and then African American and other very small percentages of, of the current population. We have what's called a bimodal educational attainment, which means we have large populations at both the lower and adult populations at the lower end and the higher end of attainment in education. And adult is defined as the population that's over the age of 25. And you can see that 22.2% of the people in the San Gabriel Valley over the age of 25 do not have a high school degree. That is a huge drag on our economy. Uh, and something the partnership is paying more and more attention to. We have started in the last year putting programs together and actually hired staff to work in education, bringing businesses into to schools, starting at the high school level. Uh, we no longer feel we can just start at the community and four-year school level, but working with high schools to try and change this trend of a very high number of people without a high school degree. 
but we also have a large number, 30% plus of our population with high attainment. And we'll be talking a lot about schools in the San Gabriel Valley as we go on. We have, uh, it's, uh, like I said, almost 72,000 businesses and a very wide, diverse uh, economic array of businesses in the San Gabriel Valley. We're 17% of all the businesses in the county are in the San Gabriel Valley. And so if you look at this chart, and it's a lot of numbers, but I'll just point out a few that I think are interesting. If you look at the chart and anything on the, uh, the column to the far, depends how you're looking at it, uh, the last column, that 17% or higher, says that because uh, we have 17% of the businesses, if it's above 17%, we have a concentration of those types of businesses in the San Gabriel Valley. And the first one is wholesale trade. Now that's not really a Pasadena-based business. I'm sure there are some businesses here in the, that sector. But if you go along the 1060, Baldwin Park, Irwindale, City of Industry, you really see how much international and wholesale trade plays a role in the San Gabriel Valley and why the Alameda Corridor East project, which grade separates major north-south streets throughout the region, are, is such an important project to make sure that we're able to keep our traffic moving throughout the San Gabriel Valley. The second one, though, private education and a, and a, a, a concentration uh, of those types of businesses, that I know rings true here in Pasadena. We are incredibly fortunate in Pasadena, in the, the region overall, with schools like Caltech and Art Center here in Pasadena. We're bookend on the other end of our region with the Claremont schools and many good both public and private institutions uh, throughout the region. In fact, one of the top reasons that businesses tell us that they look at the San Gabriel Valley, that they move to the San Gabriel Valley, is because of the quality of our schools. You also see that we have a concentration in transportation and utilities, and of course we all know that Edison uh, is headquartered in the San Gabriel Valley. Not all of their employees are in our region, but overall Edison employs about 19,000 people. They are cutting back, they're looking to, to uh, reduced to about 14,000 people, uh, but still, that's a huge impact on our economy. They have a huge facility in Rosemead. They also have most of the space at the, the corporate uh, campus where the partnership is located in Irwindale, and they are currently building their third building on the Cal Poly campus by Innovation Village. So a huge employer in the San Gabriel Valley. If we go from uh, businesses to jobs now and talk about the jobs, uh, this is just to really give you a feel for what has happened to our region. The, the red bars are the estimates, the blue bars are the actual data that, that we know. But you can see that we estimate this year we have 666,000 jobs in our region. Uh, but if you look back, you can see that 2005, and if this chart went back farther, it would even starting at 2000, the San Gabriel Valley was doing pretty well. It was steadily adding jobs every year until the recession hit. And, uh, until the recession hit. And we got walloped really big time. 55,000 jobs disappeared in about 18 months in the San Gabriel Valley. We didn't start to add jobs again until 2011, and it was really small, about 3,000 jobs we estimated that year. It is accelerating, but it's going to be mid to late 2016 till we regain the total number of jobs in our region that we had before the recession hit us. A lot of things happen, though, within that total job count. And I think it's interesting to look at how the economy has changed, where those jobs were 10 years ago, and where the jobs are today. And if you look at the top chart here, you can see that in 2004, uh, the, the largest job producing sector in the San Gabriel Valley was business services. And that's a very big industry here in Pasadena. It's the kinds of services that other businesses contract with. So it's legal, accounting, your web designer, your interior designer, your marketing, advertising companies, all of those, largest employer in the San Gabriel Valley. And followed by that, 
10, just 10 years ago, 11 years ago, was manufacturing. Now, we used to be well over 100,000 jobs. We had started to lose jobs, but it was still a very large sector in the region, followed by retail trade, healthcare, and leisure and hospitality. And now if we jump to the bottom, 2014, you can see healthcare has overwhelmed us as the largest employer in the region. And that's not unique. It is a large and growing sector in all of Southern California. Um, business services, um, we'll talk about what happened during the recession, but they are rebounding, um, followed by retail trade, leisure and hospitality. Manufacturing, which had been number two, fell to number six. And fifth now was public administration. Uh, and that's not just uh, government as we think of it, federal, county, cities, but it's also our public schools. Through our three community colleges, our, I think it's 26 high school districts in the region, um, and uh, all of our elementary schools as well are uh, in those public administration numbers. Since healthcare is so important, well, let, let, actually, let me talk a little bit about healthcare because the, the number is a little deceiving if I don't explain that 47,000. This shows the actual job counts for where our, we grew. Uh, and healthcare, it says there are 47,000, but there is an asterisk over on the side. Uh, what happened during this 10 year period is the economist. Um, just to keep us all on our toes, recoded some of the jobs. So home health care workers who used to be in other services were recoded to be health care. Uh, probably makes sense. I can understand the decision. But once you move those jobs, we probably grew about 29,000 jobs in health care. But still, that's a lot of jobs in a 10-year period. Uh, and then you'll see leisure and hospitality uh, grew 11,000. In fact, in 2011, when we started to add jobs back, it was leisure and hospitality that added jobs first. Uh, they even beat out health care that year. And then if you go to the bottom, you can see the manufacturing. Uh, in this decade, we've lost 24,000 jobs in uh, manufacturing. When we first started to lose the jobs in the 80s, um, businesses were going offshore. Uh, labor was so cheap overseas that it was cheaper to make your product somewhere and ship it back. Uh, that kind of changed a bit, and then we were hearing a lot about businesses that were leaving California because they found the climate um, difficult to work in, and other states were more business friendly. And we saw manufacturing not go over shores as much as maybe leave the state and uh, head for other states around us. What we see now in manufacturing is productivity. If you look at the number on the, how much we produce in Southern California, it's plateaued for the last five or six years. We are putting out as many goods, but we're doing it with less people because of what's happening with advanced manufacturing and the way we design and build things changed dramatically and totally uh, automated uh, many of the systems that were operated by people before. I want to just touch on this because I'm going to talk about it with some of our growth industries, and that's that how important it is to um, watch what wages are, at least the partnership believes. We're not a big organization, so we have to really focus on what we think is the best for the economy. And so we really look to where are jobs growing that are producing good wages, and how can we help those businesses move here and grow here. You can see overall wages, the San Gabriel Valley is just a little bit below the middle. These are the regions within LA County, um, and an average of about $45,000. Um, Jack Kaiser used to do this work for us when he was at the Kaiser Center, and he used to always pull this out and say, Cynthia, watch this. You really need to watch this. You don't want to be on the bottom of this chart. You're okay. Be nice to be up one or two. You don't need to be on the top. But when you don't have wages that have disposable incomes, you're not supporting your own economy, and that's very difficult for economy to continue to grow in. We have been at this same place on the chart for the six years that I've been watching this data. And this data, by the way, lags a year. We've been on 2014. You see, we're 2013 now. Um, but this year is the first time that I saw these numbers drop. 
Uh, we are th our average wage in the San Gabriel Valley is $300 less in 2013 than it was in 2012. It's true for the county too, $575 less for the county. But that has not happened before in the, the time that I've been watching the data. And uh, next spring when we get our next round of uh, employment data, it'll be very interesting to see if that was just a blurb sort of catching up from the recession or if other things are going on in the wages of our employees. So now I'm going to switch to the data that I talked about in the second report where we can go inside those major sectors and look at actually what are the jobs. And healthcare, of course, is growing fastest, so we'll go there. And this chart breaks down over a decade, so the recession is in here, so jobs went up, went down, and going back up again, but through all of that, where did we add jobs? And you can see that we added jobs most in services to ourselves. It's the doctor's office, the dentist's office. People that are serving us in health care had the highest growth in jobs in the San Gabriel Valley. And the good thing about, I mean, that's good because we all like to be healthy, but look at the wages. And these are San Gabriel Valley numbers. They pay 55000 average in those categories, which is $10,000 higher than our average salary. So these are the good types of jobs that the partnership wants to support. And the next category is the hospitals. You'll see every type of hospital we have, and we have incredible hospitals that lead this growth in healthcare in the San Gabriel Valley. And those hospitals have also been adding jobs, and you'll see they pay even higher wages, average 64,000. And then we've been adding jobs in some of the community services and other types of, of positions. They don't pay uh, the kinds of salaries that uh, certainly the doctor's offices and the hospitals uh, are able to pay. The other thing about health care that is great um, is that it really is an economic engine. Things cluster around hospitals, and you, you see that here with Huntington. We certainly saw it with St. Luke's. When St. Luke's closed, it took about three years for every office, therapist, pill manufacturing, whatever kind of company that was on that side of, of Pasadena to move over to what we thought was going to be the tech quarter, but it's now full of me bioscience medical facilities because they had to be close to Huntington Hospital. Four miles was too far away to be from the doctors. And that happens at the hospitals across the region, Methodist, City of Hope, Citrus Valley, uh, as well as, as Huntington Hospital here. What we did is we went into input-output studies, chain, uh, supply chain studies, and we looked. So where do the procurement dollars from hospitals go 